I've never had any formal art training, academic training. The early days of my art career uh, actually occurred uh, when I was in Vietnam. Uh, the guys found out that I could draw. So I wound up trading drawings of their wives and girlfriends and sisters and stuff, and they in turn would go out and pull my guard duty. And that went on pretty good for a while until the first sergeant found out about it. He says, so stop. And he said, but before you do, he said, I've got a picture of my wife. I'd really like you to draw. I, I went to school and got a degree in animal science. In 1984, I was managing a Angus ranch in Northern California, and I hurt my back. The compression and jamming of the spine caused by riding a horse. And often, you know, you take a handful of Tylenol and keep going. You got work to do. You don't have time for this. Well, it just didn't go away. So I finally went to the doctor. She said, you've got the back of an 80-year-old man. I said, so what are other options do I have? And she said, well, you keep doing what you're doing. And she said, I'll see you back here, and you won't have any options. So I wound up selling my saddle, and, which was a big, big blow. And, um, became an artist. The painting from life is the uh, most honest way to receive your information. There's not a lens made in a camera that equals the eye. You feel the heat, you feel the cold, you feel the breeze, the smells. I equate it much to riding a motorcycle, which I also do as opposed to riding in a car. If you're painting out on location somewhere, you're, you're totally immersed in the environment. Riding on the road, the freedom, the wind blowing, the smells, it's a very similar experience to plein air painting. In Montrose, we're rocking and rolling with, with our gallery and frame shop, and, and uh, all things are good. And I had been experiencing some a double vision, a little bit of memory loss, uh, uh, some oddities. And uh, I got an MRI scheduled up in Grand Junction at uh, St. Mary's Hospital. The doctor called. I said, well, this doesn't sound good. She said, it's not. and uh, I was diagnosed with a uh, stroke. So I was in uh, intensive care for uh, three days and uh, the doctor talked to me and had uh, uh, close conversations and, and uh, I was enjoying a good life. I was sitting on the deck, uh, smoking cigar, drinking whiskey and, and uh, eating a summer sausage and cheese and, and uh, doing pretty good. And uh, he said, well, you can't do that anymore. So, for the sake of time in my life, I was told by a doctor I can't do that anymore. And we had been planning a trip to Alaska for a little over a year on our motorcycle and we were scheduled to leave on June 15th, which was my birthday. So I asked him, what about that? And he said, well, he said, uh, we're all, all our days are numbered for all of us. But he said, your days just got shorter. It'd be a good idea to start doing what you want to do. And uh, my brother-in-law and his wife were gonna ride their own bikes, and then my wife and I were gonna ride mine. And uh, I told him, I said, well, I'm going. You're welcome to come. I need you to be aware. You 
might have to ship a body to motion I call. I'm gone. <sighs> I've always felt that I didn't want to wind up on my deathbed and say, gosh, I wish I would have. I want to be able to look back and smile because I did. Yeah, and it, it started uh, me considering what's important. The challenge is, is to figure out what that one thing is, what's important to you. And once you figure out what that is, nothing else makes a difference. And I think looking back, what has been important for me is the good or bad, or should have or shouldn't have, I did it my way.